We're back. Forest of Boland. There's the red beast. What a car. Oh. Forest of Boland hiking. This one here. This one. Snow. And we've got a little bit of a topic to chat about to stick our teeth into. So it's frosty. It is freezing cold. The ingredients are here for some cracking landscape photography and above all, a cracking adventure. So come and join me. Let's crack on. back guys we are back in the snow what a treat oh, do you know what I keep doing recently I keep jumping out the car proper excited um, especially when there's snow and legging it up the fell and after 20 minutes just knackering myself out oh man it is piping hot but wonderful to see you all again of course and welcome back to the forest of Boland now today um, I never planned these topic videos by the way so I'm always kind of running off what's going in my head, but I want to talk about our landscapes. And what I mean by that is what's local to you or not even necessarily proper local, but what your country offers or your uh, like county, let's say in the UK or state in the United States, whatever. And what I want to really get at here is to try and um, remind you, because I'm sure a lot of us already know this, remind you that wherever you live or wherever you regularly photograph, is incredibly appealing to somebody else, to another photographer. So for example, here in the forest of Boland, I'd be very surprised if there isn't even any on this shot here. Dry stone walls, there'll be some in the background behind me. I, I, I can almost promise. <laughs> to me, they are, well, they, they are ubiquitous. They're absolutely everywhere where I grew up. Lancashire, Yorkshire, Dales, like everywhere. Like all across Britain, really. Now to me, they're just dry stone walls, man. Like, I, I, I try and be um, appreciative of them and I try not to take them for granted because they are cool. They're really, really cool. But I mean, like, it, it's very hard to, to keep reminding yourself of this. And the point here is, to somebody that might live in Abu Dhabi, to try and think of somewhere ridiculously contrasted, these are so cool. But then to me, to photograph sand dunes in the Arabian desert, is amazing. I couldn't think of anything better at the minute, like. But to them, they're probably sick of the sight of sand dunes. So do you see what I mean? Like, you've got to try and find reasons why where you photograph regularly is class and why other people would be mad to photograph there, you know? And of course, it's not just the dry stone walls here. You know, say, if, for example, if we were comparing here or the Lake District to um, Norfolk or like East Anglia, it's flat. You know, but that appeals to me. I'd love to photograph some of the coastal areas around East Anglia. Just as somebody that might live in Norwich would be mad to come up here and photograph some of these hills in the middle of winter in the snow. Um, so the point is really, yes, we can yearn for other places. You know, I'd be mad to go to the Arabian Desert one, one day or to the Mars-like landscapes of Utah um, or to Norfolk. <laughs> and I will go to these places, but I need to, remind myself that where I am is special. It is very special and it's unique and it's got its own interests. And you know, this is something that really, really helps me stay as excited as you see that I am about the same, essentially, I mean, let's face it, the same landscapes over and over again. Hills, that's all it is at the end of the day. Hills, dry stone walls, fells, you know, lakes. Bit of snow on them. You know, if you look at it like that, that's all they are. <laughs> and. That's probably why somebody that's not into photography would be like, are you playing with a full deck? Like, absolutely mad for these hills all the time. Because, mate, they are just mountains, like. But, you know, you no more than me if you're into your photography. They are definitely not just mountains. Anyway, um, I hope that makes sense, you know. And, and the goal, like I said, is just to try and say to you is remember that whatever you photograph, wherever you're photographing uh, tomorrow when you go out with your camera, unless it's, like, round here or something like that, there's a good chance that I would love to be there right now with my camera and remember that no matter where it is even if it's somewhere else in England so beautiful beautiful snowy fells this is straight out the top drawer um, way more than I thought 
Um, I, I really just came out to photograph frost today. Um, so this is an absolute bonus. Could this is looking decent for sunset, which by the way is in about an hour and a half. So I need to get a little bit of a wobble on. So come with me. <laughs> So we're rushing around a bit guys, it is stunning and you can see just to my left here the light is streaming in here from the west obviously where the sun is setting now you can probably see as well there's quite a bit of cloud so I want to try and capture this light especially down on these trees here it looks like a bit of a, a bit of a coniferous forest and then off in the background we've got some distant fells layers but it's the light because of this cloud up here I don't know if this light's going to last so Let's get that jacket zipped up before we freeze. Um, I want to try and capture a shot now. This could be my only opportunity. So I'm going to get set up and I'm thinking long lens panorama. Whoa. Look at it, look at that, look at that light. Sub lime. <laughs> oh man. Um, so a little bit of a rush, but fortunately the light kind of stuck around. Um, I talk you through it now and then I do want to crack up to get to the top of this fell because as always, as landscape photographers, I'm uh, anxious that I'm going to miss something spectacular because it's a beautiful evening. So, eagle eyed viewers, some of you may have noticed, new tripod. Now I don't want to talk about it too much yet. Uh, except from the fact that I got it for free from iFootage um, because I wanted it, I kind of needed a new tripod. Very, very grateful to be in this position. One thing I did say to them, uh, though, or two things, was um, I have to say whatever I want to say about it. Uh, if I didn't like the tripod, I wouldn't even tell you about it because I've said this in the past. I'm not going to bring something on here and say that it's rubbish. <laughs> uh, but secondly, uh, I said to them, I want to use it for a month before I chat about it to my subscribers. Makes sense. I want to get a good bit of use out of it first. Uh, and they said, yeah, of course, absolutely. Which again, makes complete sense. I will say, one thing I will say about it now is that I absolutely love it already. It's unreal. There's four or five things on it straight away that for me, just work an absolute treat, really innovative things. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that in the future at some stage. Ah, but long lens on, 135mm, I'm doing a panel from right to left, probably about six shots. I found myself saying this so much recently, yes the snow's nice, We've got beautiful wintry conditions off in the background. We're capturing that, that quintessential English countryside, you know, it ties in really well with what we're actually talking about in this video. If you're not from England, this is an image that you're going to look at, hopefully, I'm blowing my own trumpet there. This is an image you're going to look at and think like, wow, what a beautiful um, country. Like that looks amazing. I'd love to photograph that if you're a landscape photographer. Um, and yeah, so I, I really hope I've captured the emotion, the essence of the quintessential English countryside with this shot, let's say. So um, panorama, really important, nice level tripod. Um, this particular tripod has got a bowl head, which means that I don't have to mess about with the legs to get the tripod level straight out the top drawer. And then consistent focus on just some random tree off in the background and consistent settings. Manual ISO 100 F9 180th of a second. I've took about seven or eight shots from right to left. Probably could have done it in about four, but just as an insurance policy. You know, always take more than you need if you can, if you've got time. The light is stunning. Another thing as well, remember our video when I was last in the forest of Boland and I, it was the evening and I said, oh, the fork, I said there was meant to be fog at some stage and then we had a bit of fog in the valleys it's like that again now we've got this kind of hazy fog and because the light's coming from the right hand side over here it's giving this beautiful beautiful soft effect down in the valley um amazing so i think it's gonna be a lovely panoramic shot i hope you like it i need to crack on up this mountain because like i said i don't want to be missing this light if it sticks around Whoa.
Wow, this is hard work, <laughs> but this is the uh, the heaviest <laughs> heaviest area of snowfall that I've um, experienced this winter. Uh, it's not like absolutely tons of snow, you know, but <laughs> um, it's lovely. You know, it's coming just above the ankles, and for the photography, this is class because this is so untouched. So the summit is just there on your left-hand side somewhere. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is. Now what's attracting me, I've just done a little bit of b-roll of some of them at icicles. Just, it might actually be that, see that glimmer there? I keep seeing these little glimmers of icicles. And these ones I'm actually going to head over to now off in the distance. Um, one thing I always say about the Forest of Boland, this area, as beautiful as it is, is it is very bleak and um, more importantly featureless. So a lot of what I try to do when I come to places like this is just to try and find some features to work with because this bleakness is beautiful. You know, we really get, get that emotion of vastness across anyway, regardless of what we photograph, uh, because that's just what this landscape is. So feature-wise, icicles, maybe, it's not guaranteed, and then hopefully I'm gonna try and use the sun as a feature as well, or, or the light, you know, at least. So let's head over to these icicles now <laughs> and uh, see if we can make a photograph work with them. So I've put you amongst the icicles. I hope you don't mind. Is that a bit bright, guys? I don't want an overexposed face. There we go. So, ah, oh, I feel a little bit, a little bit disappointed because I've took the shot that I wanted, but I tried my best. You know, in the past, I've tried to film things and miss the light. Whereas I've learned from that mistake, so I'm not as bothered because I, I, I couldn't have gone any quicker. I think I've just about caught the light. So what we've got off in the background is, I mean, what time are we on now? Uh, it's still another 15, 20 minutes till sunset proper. Um, but there's a bank of cloud on the horizon to the west, as there so often is. And uh, unfortunately, that's looking like that's the last bit of light that we had. So I was fighting, trying, trying my best to get the composition set up. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of a... Um, a, a little bit of a complicated composition and uh, I think I've like I said just about caught the last little bit of light I think sort of 15 minutes ago when you probably saw it it was a little bit more vibrant I'd say um, uh, but like I said I think I've caught it if anything it might be nicer because we've got a little bit of subtle orange light coming through the idea was sun in the frame at the top right and have that beautiful golden light coming towards us, lighting up the snow here in the foreground, and more importantly, kind of hitting these icicles, that golden light hitting the icicles and dispersing. Now, um, let's get to the composition and settings and stuff. Like I said, it's a little bit complicated. First thing that I wanted to do, and that I had in my head before I got set up, was wide angle lens. Yep, 11 mils, we've got the 11 to 16 Takina on. I wanted to get in really close to these icicles just like you guys are. So I wanted them in the foreground or more specifically in this case on the left hand side of the frame. And then we've got this little ridge line here that you're, you are in <laughs> that kind of leads out um, coincidentally into the sunset or that beautiful light that we had. Um, 
so that was the composition. Technically, I wanted to focus bracket in terms of um, the technical side of the thing, I mean. Um, focus, not focus bracket, um, focus stack. <laughs> I wanted to focus stack. I wanted to focus on some of the icicles in the foreground, which is right are right here. Some of the icicles where you are, and then off in the background. And the background shot, again, just to make it even more complicated, complicated I wanted to shoot at f20 to get that sunburst effect which I think I just about did I just caught the top eighth of the sun before it went down behind the clouds and that was giving us a little bit of golden light and a little bit of that sunburst effect but because I was like bracketing and focus stacking at the same time as trying to figure out the composition oh, it was just carnage <laughs> um, so 1 20th of a second, F11 and ISO 100 is kind of like the base exposure. Like I said, I was exposure bracketing. Um, so that's going to change a little bit. And of course, like I said as well, for the background shot for the sun, I shot at F, um, F20 or F18, I think, to get that sunburst effect. But it's nice. You know what? It, it's a beautiful like winter shot. I mean, we've got all the big names, haven't we? We've got snow <laughs> and we've got icicles. Um, and of course, everything is just even more beautiful because fingers crossed, we've got that nice subtle golden light from the sunset as well. <sighs> Amazing, so hopefully I've pulled it off. Um, yeah, I'll pop it up for you to see now and um, chat to you in a minute. Rushing around again, so just by chance, the moon! The moon is rising over the snow in the background, that's proper bright, isn't it? Ah, that's probably a bit better. The moon rise, so ah, I'm gonna try and capture it. I'm gonna do a pano. What am I doing? I'm all over the shop. A pano, I've got the long lens on, which is gonna uh, make the moon appear bigger than what it is because we're zoomed into it. Wide angle lens here wouldn't work, it'd just be a tiny little dot off in the background. We've got, can you see that? The summit fell, if not, it's over there somewhere. The summit fell, the summit can. <laughs> and uh, right, so I'm gonna do a pano and then maybe a couple of um, just like portrait shots as, as well. Um, plan here is to try and capture the grandeur, the vastness of the moon, if that makes sense. This is cool, right. I'll chat to you in a mini. So before we get into this shot, it's getting a bit dark now, <laughs> before we get into this, um, let me just show you this. What a Christmas gift, Sarah and Rob. Thank you very much. We've got uh, this thing here. So there we go, Nikon. What is it? It's a lens cloth and it's class because it stays, oh uh, God, that bag's heavy. It stays strapped into your bag like this. And the lens cloth, if you can't tell, is stitched into the little bag that it's in. That's amazing because, like most landscape photographers, I think, or maybe it's just me, I'm always losing lens cloths or forgetting them. Um, that's in there. E even if I'll still bring my other lens cloths, I will always have a lens cloth in my bag, even if I forget them. So that's a cool gift. Cheers, guys. So, um, Amazing. Honestly, what a buzz. Isn't it such a buzz, landscape photography? Uh, that moonrise, I didn't have a clue that that was going to happen. That is beautiful. What a treat. And uh, fortunately, I had the right lens. Fortunately, I'm on top of a fell that's covered in snow. We've got a pink glow over there because it's the opposite way in which the sun was setting. But, and this is a big but that you always must remember if you're a beginner, you have got to be in it to win it. Yes, I've had a lot of luck. I'm in the right place at the right time, but I came up here. It sounds so simple. If I'd have sat at home tonight, which I did consider, because I fancied a hot chocolate, which I will be having when I get back. 
Um, I wouldn't be witnessing this, never mind photographing it. Think about witnessing it. People don't see these sorts of things. People don't see the moon rise from the top of a mountain. Like, no one's here. Everyone's at home having hot chocolates, guys. Oh, what a buzz. I hope that this passion stays with me for the rest of my life. We've got a blanket of fog down in the Yorkshire Dales. I can see Ingleborough. Oh, just again, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. It's mad. It's amazing. Or maybe the desert in Abu Dhabi. That would be cool one day. Right. Um, so, most important thing here, like I think I mentioned, is the long lens. We want to be zooming in towards that moon. You, you've probably, even if you're not into photography, say you see a moonrise or a moon set <laughs> and you try and take a picture of it on your phone, it always just looks rubbish because what you need is a long focal length to zoom in on the moon. You don't have to get right in on the moon, but it's the same concept as that compression effect that we're getting with the mountains where it feels as if we're bringing them closer to us. It's the same with the moon. We feel like we're bringing it closer to us and making it appear larger in the frame. Of course, that's not, not what's actually happening. It's more like an effect. Um, so I'm doing a panel, you can see, uh, the camera is in portrait dimension, so exactly the same concept as my first image. Um, six or, it's freezing, I'm shivering. Six or seven images from right to left, and I've actually got the summit cairn in, uh, which is going to be on the right hand side of the frame, then hopefully the moon, there it is, is going to be on the left hand side of the frame somewhere. S sometimes it's really difficult to visualise when you're doing a panel, and usually the majesty of it doesn't... Um, uh, culminate until you get it you know up into Lightroom and you actually get the panel stitched together but that's what I'm doing so same concept as the first shot um, f11 ISO 100 and one half of a second and I've, I've focused on the summit cairn and I've kept the focus where it is even when I get over towards the moon on the left hand side and the summit cairn's not even in the shot because I want that to stay in focus throughout the image you have to think about the panorama as a whole you know I don't want to focus on the summit cairn then get over to the, the moon side of things and then change my focus. Everything needs to stay consistent throughout so that when the panel stitches together, you've got that consistency in the actual photograph. Uh, I have bracketed each shot as well, just to make it even more complicated. Oh, just as a bit of a fail safe, I suppose. So I'll leave you with this panel. Um, I did take one shot as well, by the way, zoomed in landscape shot right over there. We've got some beautiful ridges just to get that, that, that huge moon sort of shot, you know, so I'll probably show you that one as well. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And remember, you know, uh, there's always another person somewhere else in the world that would love to photograph your backyard. And just, you know, sit down with a notepad, write down a few things, what you love about it. You know, I would say the bleak Boland Fells, um, the dry stone walls, the, the vibrant green hills in the summer, you know, the beautiful rivers and the valleys, um, the epicness of Scotland, all of these places, yes, that's the big area of the United Kingdom, but for me, that's my backyard, and uh, yeah, always, always try and remember that somebody else would love to photograph ah, where you're from, right, there's some serious babbling going on, I hope you like these shots, thank you so much for tuning in, uh, in my next video, I will um, um, tell you who's won the print, the lion and the lamb print. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next adventure. <laughs> Out!